Yep. Okay, so um, welcome back everybody. Um, we're going to show a short video um, just paying tribute to um, the hubbies, um, our regional volunteers um, who up and down the country led um, the work for Change Day 2014. Um, I think we featured most of them, but I'm sure there are some we're forgetting, so in spirit we want to thank them um, if we didn't explicitly mention them or show them in this short clip we'll be showing. Um, they really were the force um, behind Change Day 2014, and without them, much of what we've done or much of Change Day 2014 would have been possible. Um, so without further ado, I think let's just uh, roll the clip. Okay, same process here, just press the play button on your screen and the video will play. Yeah, I'm seeing. Hi there. It's Helen Bevan. Can you hear me? Hi, yeah, we can hear you. Can hear you. Great. So what we're going to do now is we're just, you know, having seen that um, the, the film about the, the hubbies and like Addy says, you know, the extent to which young, um, you know, young leaders, trainees, students and um, uh, patient leaders and volunteers, you know, um, made such a difference. What we thought we'd do now is just have an informal chat about, um, you know, about about some of the kind of experiences that that we can um, relate to with that, and, and just thinking, you know, more broadly about um, other, um, you know, other um, 
young leaders, trainee students, um, student leaders in the NHS that we could potentially um, get to be um, to be um, part of our um, of our movement. So I'm going to actually start off by um, Adi asking you some questions, if that's okay. Yep. What you know? What would you say about um, about the spirit of the hobbies and how we can get more of that spirit in the in the NHS? Um, well, I think uh, one of the things that springs to mind is um, a resilience, a spirit of resilience. Um, you know, sometimes when some of these younger leaders come into organisations and they have a new way of looking at things, um, sometimes as the School of Healthcare Radicals um, encourages us that unless you keep plugging away at something, unless you keep going at something, unless you develop relationships with people who can strengthen you, um, sometimes you can feel, you know, dejected or disappointed when you try to implement things. But one of the things um, the Hubby Network has shown is that with this, um, strength in numbers really is true. Um, and that's the spirit that I think we can sort of engender across young and older leaders in the NHS that, um, you know, if one thing doesn't work, then you can talk to your fellow people in your networks to understand how to overcome that problem and just have the strength and resilience to plug away to it again and, and, and try and resolve it. Yeah, fantastic. So, you know, in terms of um, colleagues that are on the phone, what we want to do is have a bit of an informal conversation now um, about, you know, what, what um, were some of your experiences when you were at a kind of formative um, stage with the NHS and the kind of changes that you tried to do? And, and what have some of your experiences been around, um, around volunteering? So um, if you'd like to say something, um, it would be really great if you could um, put your hand up and, uh, and, and we could hear from you. So, you know, what were your reactions to seeing that video? And, um, you know, what did it, in terms of your, your earlier days, um, you know, what did, it, what did it make you think? Maybe I should tell you a little bit about um, about you know my story. I mean, I think it's it, it, um, it it's quite interesting. So, um, you know, when I was a, a lot younger um, and I was a student, I um, you know I kind of had the spirit of the activist, and um, I was very active in my community, and I linked up and um, with lots of people. And then I went to work in in local government, and then education, and then healthcare, and. I stopped. I stopped being an activist and um, an organizer and a mobilizer, and I and um, I went into very different change methods. You know, I learned quality improvement. I learned tools and techniques for change. And and really, I'd say it's only in the last sort of ten years that I've kind of gone back to being the activist again because I think what I learned was that whilst you know the tools and the approaches they do they do give you insight. They don't help you get lots and lots of people on board, and um, and I think you know we have to have the spirit of the activist and and the the, the spirit of the mobilizer, and I think that the you know that the hubbies show that so beautifully. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, um, and I think you know Polly's just said here in, in in the chat box that she's still in her early days, and, and I remember my very very early days. Um, I worked in a mental health trust, and what struck me was um, the amount of goodwill that's just around amongst frontline staff and, and even all kinds of staff in the NHS, um, you know, uh, paramedics making tea for people on their next shift and staying 10, 15 more minutes later on before the next shift just, you know, for good handover, um, you know, birthday cakes, just really small things like this that make a massive difference. and. Um, that's what Change Day has done in the effect as well. It's you know, small things that, that that make a massive difference. Yeah, no, that's great. And how do you think we ought to be, um, you know, training and socialising um, young leaders, students, trainees to, um, you know, in terms of this 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 goodwill and and this kind of um, spirit that that in a sense sets us up for our careers. Um, I think. Sometimes, or most of the time, you actually have to go to where they are. So, as we've seen um, a lot from you know the social media engagement of um, Change Day, this was going on to wean nurses chat groups, um, other chat groups that had you know tweet chats at particular times in the day. Um, WhatsApp is a popular you know um, social media app um, tool, 
and that's where some of these young emerging leaders are like on their mobile phones rather than at the desk at the laptop. So going to them, tapping into those networks, the hackathon is another example. Um, so to answer the question, you know, going to their networks, going to where they are, and um, delivering the message in a way that, that they can grasp and understand. Yeah, that, great point. And um, we're getting some really good comments in the chat now. So I'm going to put some of the chat people on the um, on the spot. So shall I start off with um, Philip? Um, um, Philip Pearson, could we unmute you, Philip, um, and um, you know add to the conversation? We got you there. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Hi, Philip. Great Hi. to have you on the call. Hello. So I've been mean, saying some really interesting things about students and the kind of attitude that we teach students. So um, it would be great to get your contribution verbally. Um, maybe that. I, my perception when I was a medical student, and for that matter, junior doctor, and all the way up to consultant, is um, we are encouraged either implicitly or explicitly to keep quiet, to not rock the boat, um, and we're told lots of things that we can't do, either because it's um, too hard or that's never been done before. And particularly working with students over the last year or two, I've been struck by the fact that they are very keen to engage, they are very keen to, do, to do things, and they don't know what they can't do, they don't know what they're not allowed to do, so they just do it. And they also come up with some really, really exciting ideas about doing things differently that um, <clears throat> older, more mature people such as me wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, and I think that really ties in with a lot of, uh, you know, of our theme around um, around diversity and getting um, you know different voices in the room and um, and, and hearing different perspectives. Uh, very um, much so. Yeah. Um, so Pollyanna is adding some comments to this as well. So what do you think, Pollyanna? In, in terms of um, how we should be working with with trainees and young leaders to get a different attitude. Um, I think we need to be listening to them, but also allowing them to connect us and get on with what they feel is the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and just enabling them to be able to have those conversations and then facilitating those conversations in the right way, explaining how the systems work so they can understand that. And also helping them discover their own talents and the other members of their teams or network talents so they can work together in the most beneficial way. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And a great comment from Claire here, I think, that's right, sort of backing up what you're saying. And Pollyanna, she says, I like the idea that before that, you know, before they know what they can't do. Um, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, yeah, that's that's absolutely um, spot on. Um, Jack, Jackie L, Jackie Linton, what's your view on this? You know, in terms of um, how we how we train and socialise. And, and engage like young leaders, students and trainees in change? Yeah, I think um, I think one of the things that I've kind of just learned from my own experience um, and having been involved with heavy is how much they value and how much they um, they welcome the coaching and the feedback. And I think back to when I was that age that you know, if I could have had that, you know, some coaching or feedback, I think that would, you know, have really kind of helped me. It helps anybody wherever they are in their career. But I think sometimes when you're young and or you're in the on the front line, you you you're not looking for it. But I think, you know, I would say look for it. And those people who can coach, coach and and support. So I think this whole idea of enabling yeah. and empowering, I think, is just so important. Um, and it, it's about unleashing the energy that's there. The energy is there. It just yeah. is unleashed. I know. I went to um, uh, I went to a meeting um, last week. Um, uh, you know, which was um about um young young clinicians um and and change agents and and you know these were the kind of um you know young people who were um uh, you know really kind of passionate about change. Um, but 
the stories that many of them tell about how hard it is and um, you know to be a to be a change agent or a change maker in the situations that they're in and it just makes it just strikes me you know how can we make it easier um for them to be to be leaders of change when they when they want to be um uh, well i think i think helen i think there's a lot of people in the system who feel worn down yeah um, and you know when you're young and you've got lots of energy and you know you spring back up but you know eventually if you keep you, you keep getting knocked down or you know you don't feel that your voice is heard then you get worn down and you check out what i call you check out and i've been in that position where I just checked out yeah yeah because um no, I, you know the system yeah. doesn't allow yeah. you to breathe in. i i um i also think it's about um i think like someone's mentioned earlier before uh, for being a facilitator of discussion pointing them in the right direction the um students from the royal society of medicine are working on a really great project um about developing multidisciplinary teams um from undergraduate education and i was working with them and what was interesting was they proposed some really radical um, initiatives and changes to undergraduate courses, but they were pitched at, I think, or, or I suggested the wrong level. And if they did pitch them at the governmental level, which is what they were proposing, um, then they would have got discouraged when their ideas were kicked back. So what I did was facilitate the discussion, helped point them in the right direction where, you know, they wouldn't go to, to senior level or to a to bureaucratic a level where their ideas be heard. Um, so sometimes, you know, for people who are new to the system, and it's not always young or, you know, people who are young in age, it's people who are maybe just new to the NHS or the health and care system. It's just about facilitating and saying, maybe not here, you know, maybe here, that's a good idea. And, you know, saying and rather than but, and just being a facilitator of progressive discussions. Mm. So, um, just, Looking, and it's great, some really good, um, really good chat here. Um, that's kind of adding into the, um, you know, into the system. So, P Pollyanna, go on, respond to what Addy said. Well, I think Addy had a really good point that we need to, when you're trying to come up with an initiative, a lot of senior leaders go straight to the top and they say, this is what we're going to do, and write a paper and a proposal, rather than maybe speaking to the people who yeah. are at their level or lower to just or to engage them at the right level and I think it's about formalising things too early on sometimes with an idea rather than just shouting about it and sharing it at the beginning and letting yeah. people get involved. Yeah, yeah, very good. And um, Jonathan's making a good point here about there being a lot of passion out there. And um, Jonathan, Jonathan Diamond, would you like to speak? Can we hear uh, you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, great. It's great to hear you. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to be able to speak to you. I'm just about to type something, actually. That, um, okay, I've no, say it instead. Yeah. I've just got involved with um, a young lady um, called uh, Claire, who uh, works at My Trust, and she's a care maker and also an RCN committee member. Now, she's only been qualified for, I think, probably uh, about eight to 12 months now, and she's probably one of the most passionate and innovative people I know. And one of the reasons she is so is because she's always been encouraged to be so. She's got it's a great passion there that. and she's met the right people uh, who have said to her, move on, move forward, tell us your ideas and we get excited with her. And I think that's probably one of the best things you can do for anyone who wants to develop things in the NHS is to provide them with the right environment, the right encouragement and the belief that things can change. It's not what we can't do, it's what we can do and that should always be the emphasis. Yeah. I really like your spirit. Thank you. That's great. So, um, anybody else who hasn't spoken would like to say something? Because we'd, um, we'd love to hear some more voices. If you'd like to, just put your hand up. Ah, oh, Joan, great. Hi, Joan. Hello. Hello, I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. Okay. I'll tell you what change they have done for me. Um, I've been in the nurse for 14 years now, and I was uh, fed up of, uh, of, you know, of going from job to job, not able to make a difference, shouting out loud, nobody wanted to hear me, and change day, 
Um, and then I become uh, disengaged and a business circle, then my care was compromised. And I just basically never left the profession three years ago. And then two years, two years ago, then I came across Chambi and then they gave me the license. I came to think about it and it gave me the license to change. And I, I was waiting for somebody else to, to tell me that, uh, that uh, you know, that I needed to do what I needed to do. And all the time the answer was in me. And it was not till I discovered NHL change day. Basically, they they like the, 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 my passion. And since then, I met so many amazing people. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Um, yeah, and I'm... I'm, I'm yeah. Hang on, I think Hello? Andy wants to say something. Yeah, Andy, yeah, um, uh, uh, if, you, if you just step a little bit away from the microphone, just so it's a bit... Uh, okay, okay. Is that better? Yeah. A little bit. Uh, better. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, I found out that I'm not alone. Um, I'm not the only one who's trying to save the NHS. There's a lot of people very passionate like me, and it made me uh, basically a found home. Um, for me, NHS has um, become my passion uh, again. And I just changed the day. Is, uh, I found uh, a reason why I want to go to work every day and fight to, to make the, the better care and provide a be a better nurse. And change has been one of the channels that I managed to do that. It gave me a voice. And a voice that I do, since then I'm not shut up and I keep shouting loud and clear. And hopefully I'm bringing a lot of people with me. So, Joan, can we just get you sorted out in terms of the distance you're standing from the computer? And the reason why we're saying yeah. this is because Joan, um, with with Maria, another hubby, is um, is next on in about four minutes. So, um, so yeah. we just we just want to get you um, sounding right because you're not quite sounding right at the moment, um, Joan. So, okay. uh, I think yeah. So, what I think we should maybe do is if we wind up this um, if we wind up this conversation now. I mean, I take a lot of hope yeah. from this conversation. Because what we're saying is there's so much potential, there's so much energy, and it's yeah. almost like a kind of prevention strategy in terms of how we work with our young leaders, our students, and, um, and, and, um, and our trainees. And I think, yeah, lots to give us hope um, uh, about there, because when we've got people like Philip, um, you know, looking after education, and we've got people like Jonathan reporting back, um, uh, you know, the kind of experiences of young leaders that are so different and so supported. And then we've got people like Joan um, and, uh, and, and uh, Pollyanna and Ade, you know, um, this kind of new generation of leadership coming up. I think we should be very hopeful. So, so um, thank you to everybody that took part in that conversation. Um, we're, um, I think what we'll do now, we'll just take a break for about, um, for about um, uh, three minutes. And, um, and then we've got um, we've got Joan and um, and Maria, who are who are going to um, tell us about their pledge to inspire others to reignite their passion and encourage them to believe in their own ability to make a difference. So I think this is a really nice transition, actually, that conversation um, before um, Joan and Maria's session. So I think we'll stop there and um, we'll get Joan sorted out in terms of microphone. And we'll start again um, in um, in two minutes. Um, thanks all. Hi, Maria, Hello? Joan, and Maria. Nina here. I'm just going to test your um, test all three of you mic now. So, Joan, do you want to let me see? Just say say something to me, and I'll let you know how. It's Maria there. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Maria Fair. Hi, Maria. <laughs> are you trying to kill me? Am I what? Are you trying to kill me? No, I'm not near a pyramid. <laughs> you want to hear me after that, you know? Okay, so, Maria, we can hear you loud and clear. And, Joe, are you on the telephone? Or on your computer? Joe? Maria? Yeah, you're on your, are you on your phone or on your computer? You're on your phone, right? Yeah, so if you're, when you're speaking on your phone, if you just hold it a little bit away from your, from your mouth, then it should be a little bit clearer. Are you just Okay, yeah, that's, that's a little bit better. 
Okay. Should we try? Sorry. Hi, Mina. Should we try? Um, try and just keep saying testing one two one two. Just. Okay. Yeah. Let's try that. Then testing one two three. Testing one two three. <laughs> Whoa! A little bit, a little bit further from the cell zone. What's up? Your microphone is really strong, Joe. Yeah. My microphone. Is it not good enough? Okay. Is that better? That's a little bit better. Yeah. Your microphone's making you sound Spanish, Joe. What? Spanish? Okay, no, 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 you, you're sounding good. And Joan, I think it's better now. Okay, Lydia, you better. Can we test your mic as well? Yeah, that's, that's better, yeah. Okay. Lydia, are you, are you there, Lydia? Hey, Joan and Maria, I'm going to meet you for now. I'll unmute you when we're ready to start. So just muting both of you. Hello. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Mina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Can I test my video as well? Yeah. I'm going to turn on your video. Hold on a second. Okay. Let's see now. You should you should have the little video thing oh, yeah. show up. If you just click on that, let's see if that comes on. I just need to check. There's nothing incriminating <coughs> in the background. <laughs> Fair enough. No, it looks good. Good, thank you. <laughs> it looks um, still bright and sunny for a, the, the end of the day on a Friday. So. Yeah, maybe I should move a bit away from the window. No, 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 it's good, it's good. Okay, yeah, that's okay. a bit better. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to mute you now as well. Okay. Okay, Joan, I'm just checking your video camera now. So see it. Okay. Let's see if we can see you. Be able to see me. I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can see you now. Thank God. Hi, it's Helen here. I'm going to be chairing the next section. And for those of you that are on the WebEx, um, please bear with us. We're about to just start. We're just um, trying to get our our sound right. Um, so, um, uh, a comment from um, Jackie Linton: My ears are throbbing, but all good. I know that feeling. Um, <laughs> absolutely. 